welcome everyone to Airflow Summit 2021. Uh, like Ryan mentioned, I'll be taking some uh, time to talk about, you know, taking first steps toward contributing to Apache Airflow. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm Ryan, a data engineer at Deloitte. Uh, and, and so the, the first question, I guess, is, is why open source software? Um, you know, quick internet search will show why a lot of companies should participate in, in open source, but why should individuals contribute? Um, I can't really answer that for you, but I can, you know, touch on, on my experience and my motivation. Um, so honestly, first of all, it looks good on a resume. Um, if you can demonstrate, you know, uh, that you're proficient enough in a particular tool, uh, that a company uses, you know, that, that that's going to look good. Um, you know, I might not be able to invert uh, a binary tree, but, um, you know, I can show some pragmatic practical skills. Um, it's also pretty fun. You know, I, I enjoy coding. Uh, I enjoy, you know, just being involved in, in open source software. Um, you know, you can also learn from a lot of really bright people outside of, of your organization. Um, there are a ton of really, really sharp people uh, from, you know, all around the world who are contributing to Airflow and a lot of um, open source projects. Um, and for me, you know, it's, it's really fulfilling. So for a long time, I wanted to give back to a lot of the open source projects that I consume, uh, but never really got around to it. I don't know if I was lazy or just intimidated, um, but, you know, actually pushing, uh, getting pull requests merged into the code base, uh, you know, it's really rewarding um, and it, it feels pretty good. Uh, and, you know, what about what is Airflow? So it's a, it's a platform created by the community to programmatically author schedule and monitor workflows. Uh, if you're here, you probably already know that. Um, it's kind of like Cron, uh, but on steroids, uh, you know, baseball in the 90s kind of steroids. So it allows you to schedule data workflows, of course, uh, but it also helps you manage and alert on inevitable errors and, you know, a lot more than that. Um, and part of what makes Airflow so, so great and powerful is its community. Uh, it started out as a project at Airbnb and it was open source from the very first commit and it's grown massively. Um, you know, huge companies like Google have made significant contributions. Uh, the company Astronomer is a major contributor um, and tons of individuals from around the world help contribute to its continued success. Uh, and there are you know, a bunch of community plugins for all different kinds of, of workloads. You know, if you need to schedule a Spark job on Amazon EMR, there's a plugin for that. Uh, if you need to wait until a file arrives in Google Cloud Storage before processing it, you know, there's a plugin and so on and so on. Um, it's, it's really robust, robust and you know, full of features. And a lot of that is thanks to kind of the vibrant and diverse community that's been built over the years. Um, and that community has led to my journey with Airflow. Um, a mentor of mine suggested getting involved uh, with open source contributions. Um, he said, you know, Airflow would be a great opportunity given kind of my background in Python and, and having used the tool in the past. Um, and then Brad Kern from uh, Astronomer contact, uh, connected with me kind of by chance. Um, and he, he got me in touch with Caxel who's now the leading contributor uh, to Airflow, and he's a member of the Airflow Project Management Committee. Um, and, and Caxel was really helpful. He took the time to uh, help me get started with, with contributing, and I took a lot of what, what Caxel shared with me uh, and put it into an Airflow blog post. Um, if you search for Airflow imposter syndrome or committing to Apache Airflow, it should be uh, the, the first result. And, and that blog was kind of the inspiration for, for this talk. Um, and a little bit on, on that note, uh, you know, I, I've kind of struggled with imposter syndrome for you know, a lot of my career. I don't have a computer science degree. Uh, I'm still not very strong in, in data structures or algorithms. Um, and I've often been surrounded by really, really talented people and it's, it's kind of intimidating. Um, but fortunately, you know, a lot of those people are, are very encouraging um, and you know, they've kind of uh, you know, moved me forward and given me the confidence you know, that I need to be successful. Um, and there are so many ways to add value as someone in technology. And similarly, there are so many ways uh, to contribute to open source beyond just writing code. Um, and so I want to talk a bit about non-coding contributions. Uh, I want to reiterate how you can be very impactful and make really meaningful contributions uh, to open source software without writing a single line of code. Um, and so first of all, documentation, you know, it's so important, especially project the size of Airflow, it's, it's absolutely critical. Uh, I think I read somewhere once, you know, that someone's favorite commits and, and pull requests are for documentation and you get bonus points if it's, uh, if it's a single line. Uh, you know, you can fix typos, uh, documentation that's out of date, you can update grammar. Uh, if you find a piece of documentation that's missing or, or lacking for a particular feature, uh, you know, you can go ahead and add it or update it. Um, and there's also the Airflow blog, you know, there's one on the website itself and there's also a community on Medium. Um, and if you've had experience with a unique workflow, 
write a blog about it. If you've scaled Airflow to a billion DAGs and you know, want to give your team a little bit of visibility for, for that accomplishment, write a blog about it. Uh, there's a lot to write about and a lot to share. Um, and if you join the Airflow Slack, you can join the blog post channel uh, and you can add new posts, you can edit posts uh, and just generally help out. Um, and you know, speaking of Slack, uh, it's an awesome, awesome resource for Airflow. Um, anyone can join. You can find answers to questions about contributing, uh, getting started with Airflow, or really anything Airflow related. Um, and if you have some Airflow battle scars, you can help answer, answer questions in the uh, the newbie questions channel. Um, there, there's pretty much a channel for any any use case you might have with Airflow. Um, you know, if you're an expert with Airflow on GCP with Cloud Composer uh, or with AWS, you can join their respective channels and share your experiences. Um, and, and finally, there's also the, uh, the, the mailing lists. Um, you can subscribe to the Airflow users mailing list or uh, the dev list. You can stay up to date on you know, both Airflow and its releases, as well as discussions on uh, new features, the direction of Airflow, feature requests, um, all, all, all sorts of things. And you know, the dev lists are, or the mailing lists are, are really, really valuable. Um, and of course, you know, with you know, open source software, code contributions are obviously very important. Um, a fairly natural contribution progression would be to start with non-contributions to build up familiarity with the community uh, and, and the tool. And, and when you're comfortable, you can start making pull requests to, to the code base. Um, and it, when you're ready to get started with, with code contributions, you know, I recommend checking out Airflow's GitHub. That's really kind of the, the end all be all for uh, contributing to Airflow. There, there's tons of information there. Um, go through the README after digesting the README. Uh, there are a ton of guides on the main page, um, and I definitely recommend checking those out. And that, that's kind of where you know, I, I was a little bit lost when I tried to get started. Um, and I kind of just looked at the code. I didn't really understand much about what I was doing or how to contribute to the code base. Um, but check out the guides. Uh, anything really on the main page that ends with .rst is worth checking out. Um, but keep in mind that there is a ton of information there. So you know, don't be afraid if you get a little bit overwhelmed. Um, you can start with a quick start. There's, it's, it's a pretty long quick start, uh, but there's a ton of very useful information in there. Um, and, and then make sure you read up on the, the contributing guide uh, and learn about Breeze. Um, you know, Breeze is a develop and test environment for Airflow. It uses Docker Compose, uh, and it's used in the actual. It uses the same process as the actual CI process. So, if it runs in Breeze, chances are high, uh, you know, that it'll successfully run in the CI process. Um, and just know that you can always come back to uh, a lot of the documentation, a lot of the guides that are available um, on the main Airflow GitHub page. Um, and you know, don't forget about testing. I tend to. Um, in my experience, you know, everyone knows how important testing is. Everyone talks about how they want to have you know good code coverage, um, but it also often kind of falls behind the wayside. Uh, you know, maybe the CTO steps in and says, "Hey, you know, we need feature X, Y, Z, and we need it yesterday." Um, you can't really be lazy with with testing on a project the size of Airflow when you have contributors from around the world. Um, it, it's really important, and I, I think um, you know every single code pull request I've uh, I've made. Um, I think I've initially forgot to uh, to actually implement a test for it, and so you know the the committers will will gently remind you um, to go ahead and and write tests um, and just get familiar with with the tests and. Uh, all of the CI checks that are implemented in uh, the Airflow CI process. Um, and so kind of be just before closing up, I want to touch on you know some resources. Uh, there's a ton available for you to learn about Airflow. So you know Air Airflow is in Python. There's all sorts of uh, information for learning Python. On the ecosystem tab of the Airflow site, uh, there are a bunch of learning resources for Airflow specifically, as well as a bunch of links to things like managed Airflow services, like Cloud Composer, uh, AWS's uh, managed Apache Airflow tool, uh, Astronomer, and, and a bunch more. And you know, I, I don't know if Airflow is currently working with Outreachy, but I learned about Outreachy through Airflow. I don't know a ton about Outreachy, um, but they help underrepresented individuals get paid internships contributing to open source software. And I think it's super important to know, you know, that everyone's welcome to to contribute to Airflow. Uh, it's got a very diverse and global community. And there are people from all walks of life making significant contributions, and and you can do it too. Uh, and so that wraps up.